Hello and welcome to the news.tv. My name is Spencer Burke, your host for Think Forward. Today I've gathered together with Darren and some friends talking about the book Economy of Love and an amazing project with relational tithe. Well, you've hoodwinked me into this amazing group of people. Usually it's one on one. Yep. Tell me, tell me what, what you got planned here. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things, Spencer, that I thought around this economy of love is, is that it's a joint love, uh, a, a joint venture. And that's how Relational Tithe got started, was uh, Shane and I pulling together a handful of people and saying, what would happen if we started to share a tenth of our personal income together? And it's continued to spread that way by friends inviting friends to enter into this relationships and to find ways to be able to share the tithe with one another. Well, what I love about it is this project actually came out of beta testing. I mean, all the best projects and <laughs> software. So this is really the beta testers. These are the people that have the stories. So as people are considering maybe doing this project, they'll hear firsthand some of the good, maybe yeah. some of the bad, uh, and ways that we can kind of take forward with this. So I like this. This is great. Yeah. So, you know, uh, one of the ideas is just to be able to say, you know, what are the stories? Uh, because I think that one of the challenges around living out an economy of love is saying, how do I find my Calcutta? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I live in Riverside, or I live in Denver, or I live uh, somewhere in, you know, I'm constantly surrounded around people that seem not to have a whole lot of need. And one of the things that Mother Teresa always said is, is that there are Calcuttas everywhere, only if we would have eyes to see them. We need to have these places of refuge to where the widows and the orphans are being cared for. Uh, we need to have places to where the tithe is being shared with the aliens and uh, uh, those widows and the orphans and those that are living on the margins. And and all we did was saying, what would that look like if we really started taking that mandate seriously and started to say, who are those people in our midst? Who are those folks? And the one thing that we said is, is that there's a difference between just brokering resources and journeying with someone. And so we said there can't be any more than one degree of separation, meaning that we have to be in direct relationship. And you know, the stories that we have here are people that are trying to figure out a way to have our lives journey with one another so that we know that we're not alone, mm -hmm. that we're walking through this life together, no matter how difficult the situation might be. And that is the encapsulation of the economy of love, economy of abundance, and an economy of enough. Mm -hmm. Someone's picked up the curriculum, they've watched a video, they've read through the book and understand the idea of tension or other ideas. And now they're going, well, wait a minute, how do I even do this? So what are some of the stories that you could say, hey, you know, even if you're intimidated a little bit, or this is how it played out in my life. Thinking of um, aha moments and thinking of um, Nancy, um, learning, we, we did a training together, recognizing that we, um, we're not speaking the same language, recognizing that we are coming from a place of privilege and not knowing how to understand the mindset of someone coming out of generational poverty or poverty. And uh, my friend Nancy is, is that story. And in just a brief moment of talking to her about goals, talking to her about getting over these hurdles of um, cash and goes, of evictions and can't getting into places, it was like, well, t goals, goals, you know, let's think forward. Then learning, what do I need to do today? And getting to just say the word need versus goal was huge for me. I mean, maybe not even for her and she didn't even realize it, but for me to say, what do we need today? And then getting her, what do we need tomorrow? And then the aha came to her where she was like, oh, I need to go down and get this, I need to do this, and so just speaking a language, even how simply that was, was just an aha for me, but an aha for her where she knew what she could do and she knew that she wasn't alone anymore, that we would do it together. I remember a guy that we, you know, helped out with his, his car, we, we didn't fix it on the first round, second round, maybe you know, the third or fourth round, we finally, you know, got it right. Sometimes we get to come alongside people like uh, one of my co-workers uh, that, that suddenly died. Uh, he died of a brain aneurysm and um, I didn't know his family. He was within one degree of separation. I knew his family only through relationship with, with him. But uh, we were able to come alongside and, and, and help pay for the funeral. Uh, we sent them the check and well, along with the letter. 
uh, from from the uh, the group saying that what we were doing this is from a group of friends that love you so on and so forth and uh, they ended up calling Darren because they didn't know what the relational tithe was they they would have known my name but they didn't know what relational tithe is because again it's 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 the person it's the relationship not the not the program so when they found found this out they I know that they were asking Darren whether or not there were strings attached to the to the gift and well what do we have to do for this or what do we you know and when he told them that there were no strings attached it was just a gift of love I know that they they broke down weeping and crying couldn't they could not believe that somebody that a group of people that they did not know would do this for them and and what blows me away about that is it should that should be more commonplace it's what we want to be more commonplace so we had a friend that we knew through through church her and her husband they weren't very good with their money at all in the beginning and so he didn't pay off his um he didn't register his car and he's been going on an unregistered car for i don't know almost like three years he said he was doing that and he had this big bill built up and he's been so much better with his money since then and so tight but it's still so tight that he couldn't pay it off and everyone we decided that everyone gets a chance to start over you know it's really hard for people to start over when yeah maybe they made some mistakes maybe they they spend it on a billion things credit card debt all that stuff but if now they're in the right mindset and they're willing to try but they're still not that place where they can do that we're able to come come alongside them and help them you know it's interesting as I'm listening to these stories it sounds like the things that keep the church from being generous are things that you've solved. One is, uh, a lot of times it just has to be a huge project. We have to serve an entire neighborhood, a block, or a city, you know, because the church has so many resources, um, where it sounds like you're able to move in really on the individual need. So Spencer, I think that, you know, I'd be one of the first to say that, you know, if, if the Sunday morning thing's working for your neighborhood, don't stop it. No, no. Mm -hmm. um, but don't do it at the expense of neglecting those in your neighborhood. That they have to go hand in hand. And that's one of the great tensions is that people go and say, well, you know, if I start participating around this economy of love and living into relational redistribution, what are those implications for the local congregation? And I don't think that it has to be an either or. but when we make decisions that value one over the other instead of trying to say how do we bring these together I think we're selling short the neighbors that we live around and what they actually value but that is the beauty is I don't stand alone I stand with a group so it's like Paul saying search out your salvation in fear and trembling it's that we are searching that out collectively and in the economy of love you're invited to do that same thing within your group. What does it look like to come alongside of a close friend? So I've loved hearing all the stories and, and really the possibilities of this. Like we've said, it's not either or, it can be both and. So let's say somebody's in a small group or they're looking for a curriculum and, and it's like, this really solves it out of beta into the possibility of someone being able to see some short stories with a video, listen to Shane kind of talk about some of this or, or uh, grab the book uh, and they can Connect, connect with it in that way. Um, talk to me a little bit about how you see people possibly using this in the next phase of the project. You know, when Shane and I started this, you know, you would think maybe it would be really easy for us to pull together a bunch of people to start this out. Most of our friends thought we were crazy. Yeah. You know, they said, you're inviting us to come in. And I think that for many of them, the only reason that they ultimately decided to do it is because we did it said we're only doing it for six months oh, good insight. and we said let's do it for six months and let's see what happens and during that six months it was something to where we all said why would we stop and we've just continued on and we've invited others into the journey and I suspect for someone that picks this resource up and they start to walk that journey they invite two or three friends together they'll find themselves going I don't know if we should do this. Okay, let's do it for six months and then let's see what happens. They probably will conclude the same thing. Let's just continue on doing that. Well, thanks so much for sharing. I'm looking forward to the stories in the next six months and the six months after that as well. It's been fun, Darren. Hey, <laughs> this is great, Spencer. Bye, man. Appreciate it.